One person who's been voicing his fury at the Victorian government's decision to strand Victorians in New South Wales is former Premier Jeff Kennett, and he joins me now. Jeff, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Julie. I don't think it's so much uh, my anger as just dismay and disappointment for those people who have been caught up again with a government and their bureaucracy who make contradictory statements which put so many people both at risk, uh, very anxious and in many cases severely out of pocket. And so again you would have thought knowing what was been happening in Sydney for some time our people down here would have learned from past mistakes and they would have been able to meet the requirements of Victorians who were interstate the whole concept that the Victorian government is locking its border to Victorians en masse is just, uh, it's inhumane. I was about to ask you that question. What is wrong with this virus response in Victoria? Remembering we only have a short well, amount of I time. Think, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I think the reality is we've got to manage this virus. You can't put in uh, regulations overnight that disadvantage thousands upon thousands of people. So we've had three cases the last couple of days, one today. We've got a population of close to six million. Every time there's one case, three cases, six cases, are we going to close the borders? Are we not going to be able to have a system that allows those with special needs to access the state quickly enough, whether it's because they're aged and need a medical help? I mean, there's something like two and a half thousand applications and they've processed 60. I mean, what the blazes is going on? Should there be a national plan on borders? Because as you said, uh, the borders are shutting so unbelievably quickly. New South Wales, acting New South Wales Premier John Barillaro has said this week that borders aren't like a light switch. We can't just turn them on and off. The ACT Chief Minister has reminded us that pandemics don't last weeks or months. They actually last years. And you yourself have said there will be outbreaks from time to time. So should we be more united on this, coming up with a plan on how to live with COVID? Well, one of the things I've called for, as has other people with some sort of knowledge of how governments work, is a Royal Commission into the way in which we've all handled this pandemic. And that is not designed to apportion blame. That doesn't interest me at all. But we've got to be able to take out from this experience uh, enough information that we develop what I would call an aid memoir not only for continuing to deal with this pandemic, but there'll be another in five or 10 or 20 years, and we've got to learn. And one of the issues which we've got to have examined by an independent person, not, not a politician, an ex-politician, but one or two totally independent people, is whether the federal government should have the power in the face of a pandemic to declare a state of emergency and then hand the operation of how we handle that pandemic over to someone with what I would call experience, military training, discipline. And one of the aspects of that investigation will be should the federal government have control on the way in which borders are opened and closed? Because we can't keep going on like this. Even if we have, we went through a period of 60 days without a case. Now we've had a few, so what have we done? We've shut the border. We've got people stranded in New South Wales. We've got people in Queensland being told fundamentally, drive through New South Wales, do not stop. And then you get to the border and you get stopped. So it's just chaotic and it's just not worthy of a government and a community in control of its own destination. We are still responding. We are not being proactive in dealing with this pandemic here in Victoria. Uh, when National Cabinet met to discuss what qualified as a metropolitan hotspot, uh, three days rolling at at least 10 cases. Well, New South Wales has been under that for a number of days now. Just in relation to this latest shutdown uh, of the borders, would you have shut down the borders as Victoria did? No, but I'm not saying I have access to all the information, nor do I say I'm my assessment is better than anyone else's. But, but in your what experience? I do say, my experience tells me this pandemic will keep rearing its head perhaps for another year, maybe longer. Are we going to close the borders every time we have three or four outbreaks? As I said earlier, we're a population statewide of around six million people. Are we going to cause, close the borders when New South Wales has a few, when Victoria has a few? It just doesn't make sense because along the way, you're not only going to destroy uh, people's confidence in taking 
information from government leaders, but you're going to destroy a lot of businesses. We've already got businesses in New South Wales, farming communities, who can't collect their fruit and produce. Uh, how much longer are we going to continue this sort of demanding role that says whenever a case occurs, shut down, shut down, shut down. We cannot live like that. And finances aside, what are your concerns about the uh, impact this time of uncertainty and confusion will have on the mental health of people as well? Putting your Beyond Blue hat on. Well, I think, Julie, when, when things start to return to normal, when the restrictions were lifted here in Victoria, a lot of the anxiety of a lot of the population disappeared. Uh, but have a look at, for instance, our universities. Our enrolments have dropped here and they've moved to New South Wales. Our population is said to shrink. The impact of this pandemic in 2020 is going to play out in 21 and 22 and maybe longer. So there are going to be people who have been winners and the majority of the community will get through this fine. But the other part of our community is going to suffer greatly. And we haven't yet been able to properly assess the impact of their business failures or their reduction in employment opportunities properly. And we won't be able to do it with any authority, probably for 12 months. So it would be wrong to say what the finite result is going to be. We're unfortunately going to have to wait until time unfolds. Jeff Kennett, we do have to leave it there, but thank you so very much for your time. Uh, let's hope that things change in relation to the border situation sooner rather than later. Thank you. Well, let's not, let's not rely on hope too much. Let's hope, as you would call it, those people in control get their act together and give us consistency of message, which doesn't mean that people are unnecessarily put at a disadvantage uh, simply because governments don't know what they're doing. Thank you, Jeff.